Emergency services in full swing after a suspected spinal injury. Young Maxi. Should get to him. Growing up fast. And on a beach where anything goes, something truly bizarre. Every year, young hopefuls compete to join one of Australia's elite rescue teams. But only a handful make the grade. 17-year-old Maxi is in his second year as a trainee. In the next few months, he's hoping to achieve his dream of becoming a fully-fledged lifeguard. My goal is to finish early and probably be a, hopefully be a seasonal lifeguard in 2010, summer 2010, so I'm aiming for that. Maxie's improved out of sight, he's taken it on board and it shows because he's finished his TAFE course earlier than what um, was anticipated. Out in the water he's uh, going really good, he's training hard, he's picking up things now that sometimes take two or three years to do and he seems to be taking it on board. But Maxie still has a bit of growing up to do. Yeah, being the new guy, I suppose, you kind of, you just want to impress everyone and, and, and make everyone feel like they can have faith in you, I suppose. So you kind of want to do everything, but on the other hand, you've got to remember that you've got to work as a team and, and that's the best way that this place works is as a team. He's still a little bit overexcited sometimes. He rushes into things, but, you know, he's only young. You keep forgetting how young he really is, but, mate, he's, he's going really good. I'm very passionate about being here for the next thousand years. I, I, I love it. It's the best job. I can work on the beach, save people's lives, meet new and lovely people every day, so it's good. Uh, hopefully I'm the youngest, longest and the oldest, so we'll see what happens. So I'm up against Dunstan and Bacon, but they got nothing, mate. When lifeguards take delivery of a new ATV, or Rhino, they discover a problem. The crucial board rack is too small. We we'll take them off and we'll bend them. Yeah, we can bend them. What, what, what's this made of? Solid steel. Solid steel wall. It's pretty strong. Mate, we can do it ourselves. Ever eager to help out, Maxi decides to fix the $20,000 Rhino himself. I just thought, you know, just give one more little push and I use my knee and just snap straight off. So I've um, been probably here for about two hours trying to fix it. We don't want to give him too much flat. He does a good job most of the time. You need, you need to explain yourself, Maxie, when we're done. All right. Me and uh, Kevin are bacon. I don't like you dragging me into this. I'm well, not. We're just here. We're, we're, we're no, sorting no, out the board. Was, right the board's up. still a bit so too it's, wide. So it's a brand start, new rack. And how long has it lasted? One ride. One ride. So he has got a bit of clumsy about him, so we've got to try and work on that. I don't know how, but we'll have to try. The water's that way, mate, not... <laughs> Anyone drowning? He really wants to be a lifeguard more than anybody, and that's what it is. If you, know, you, want, to do, if you want something that bad, you, you know, you'll eventually you'll, you'll get it. With the rhino finally in action, Maxi patrols with Box and Beardy. A major rip is running in the middle of Bondi. A bit of a deep hole. Only metres from shore, a young girl has walked off a sandbank and struggles in a deep hole. Spotting her among oblivious swimmers, Maxi reacts quickly. One of the fastest board paddlers on Bondi, he knows every second counts for the young girl. Nine-year-old Alicia is on holiday from Darwin. Unfamiliar with waves and rips, her first swim at Bondi wasn't the thrill she expected. I got out there and she just started swimming a bit more and then the wave has come and I was like, and like, it just seemed to struggle to get back up so I just leant over as far as I could and just picked up and just dragged on the board. No problem. I said, oh, what was it like coming back on his surf? Well, she goes, fun. <laughs> and then he just lifted my hand and first I thought it was my daddy. The waves are huge here for us. I said, and darn, we, we get these waves if we get a good cycle, and that's about it. Yeah, so for us, every every time we're in the beach, it's, yeah, it's mad. 
It's a lucky escape for a family more aware of killer crocs than killer rips. Hidden beneath the waves are dangers that trap many swimmers. The sea floor constantly changes as waves and currents dredge the sandy bottom. It's a sandbank like that, and you can imagine a river running along the front of the sandbank. It's just eroded it. So you've got people walking waist deep, and then next minute, boom, they're over their heads. Even on seemingly benign days, beachgoers have drowned after blindly walking into holes and gutters. When tide and swell then combine to create a rip, a calm day can turn to mayhem. Hoppo spots two men struggling. Before he sends out a lifeguard, he needs to check if other swimmers are in trouble. Yeah, mate, he's, uh, he's probably the worst. There are now two groups struggling. Hoppo sends in Troy and Quinn. With multiple swimmers in trouble, the boys have to make snap decisions on who gets priority. Troy rescues two swimmers, then spots two more. Powerless to help, he needs backup. Max is just gone as well. Yeah, they both got three each on their boards, mate. Inundated with exhausted swimmers, Troy's board becomes dangerously overloaded. Even kids in the shallows are becoming unstuck. As Troy struggles to manage four swimmers, head lifeguard Hoppo decides to join the rescue himself. Maxi needs direction on who to help next. But with Hoppo now in the water, he manages to spot one more struggling swimmer in the impact zone. Then, just as quickly as it began, the chaos is over. Mate, that dead chip pulled out a dozen then. I, Gonzo had, uh, Gonzo had about three or four. Maxi had a couple. I think Quino had three or four as well. I turned right at 2.30 and then started ripping them all out. That's how it sort of seems to happen. Everyone, everyone goes at once. They're all on their tippy toes, on their tippy toes with Stan. And then as soon as that, that current just pushed back out again, they're all... They're all knocked, they're all knocked off their feet. It seems anything goes on Bondi, but some behaviour is truly bizarre. A massive crowd suddenly starts swarming at North End. It's the biggest mob lifeguards have seen. Not a bird, not a plane, it's Hilly from Brisbane. He lost a bet and now has to swim at Bondi in a Borat mankini. Look at, imagine you were sunbaking there with your kids or something, right? He was expecting to turn a few heads, not a few thousand. Oh, 
they could just erupt down there, eh? Like when you, you know when they start getting revved up. Yeah, I definitely would have underestimated being mobbed like that. He's still oh. stuck in there. I don't know what he's doing. Has he got any pants on yet or what? But what was a bit of fun is starting to get out of control. One man becomes abusive. As police escort him off the beach, the show isn't quite over. As soon as he ran down, I think the police wigged out because they thought there was a, a fight or something. But like he gathered that much of a crowd, it was either they're going to love him or they're going to do something to him when he gets out of the water. And he's lucky that they, that they actually thought it was quite funny. He's lucky he got away with it, I think. <laughs> it turns out Hilly is a serial show-off, very attached to his man -kini. Yeah, it shows off my finger, yeah. My finger, especially with my wax stomach, with my wax stomach. I got a dare, thought I'd do it. Mankini man, you know, a bit of fun, a bit of promotion, you know, just the usual Queenslander stuff. There's something about the freedom of the beach that makes people cut loose. But having fun can be a dangerous endeavour. Now, another crowd has formed at Bondi. This time, it's no joke. A teenager has been dragged from the surf by his friends. Brad and Dunstan head down to assist the team of lifeguards and volunteer lifesavers. Hi, man. His uh, name is Zach. He's 16 years old. Copy. Zach, from Western Sydney, injured his neck in the surf. No risks are taken with a possible spinal injury. A neck brace will help immobilise him while lifeguards test how much feeling and control he has in his limbs. But something about his responses isn't right. Best off just going to the hospital, getting it checked out, just to make sure, you know, because you don't want to make it worse. As paramedics arrive, the crowd becomes an issue. Lifeguards and paramedics need to transport Zach without moving his spine. Police, lifeguards, volunteer lifesavers and paramedics all work as a team. Reduced um, sort of power in his in his grip and a lot of pain in his lower back. That was sort of a step above not being able to feel your legs and and hands. We did the assessment. And his motor functions are really sort of depleted. He had no strength in his hands, and when we were touching him, he had a bit of a sensation. When I was touching him on the thigh, he kept telling me that I was touching his back. So I think. Yeah, there was something definitely up there. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have a spare. Which one's coming with us? Yeah. Yeah, what? 
X-rays and CT scans will soon determine whether Zach's injuries are permanent. On a beach with plenty of space, finding your own patch of sand shouldn't be a problem. But now, a man is invading the personal space of women sunbathing. A couple of girls just reported to Corey, this bloke here we got on the camera. He's been playing himself on the beach. So I'm just trying to uh, catch him out here, if we can. I was just tanning and he came and sat next to me and I was, I was feeling really uncomfortable. He kept staring. And... It's disgusting. People should be able to come here and just enjoy their own space, you know, not, not that sort of stuff. He's out of there. You would have saw the girls go talk to Corey. We'll just keep an eye, see where he goes. Lifeguards can't police everything, but inappropriate behaviour is not welcome on Bondi Beach. Why do they always look the same? They always look the same. They always have high shorts, yeah, collared hats, yeah. sunnies, yeah. pale white skin, semi fat. They always look the same. <laughs> He's not going to go, he's not going to leave the beach. He's just going to go bonk himself oh, down north. Yeah, so we'll keep a good eye on him. Yeah, Cosmo, just let you know, he hasn't really left the beach. He's heading north. We've got the camera on him. Um, yeah, as you head north, we'll tell you where his location is if he does sit down again. I can still see him, mate. Thank you. I'm going to go and sit probably past where he is and um, just so he sort of thinks that no one's just keep an eye on him and, yeah, just watch him, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> After a swim, the man changes into a different shirt, then lies down next to another group of women. Been following this guy. Apparently, he's been cranking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, been following him. He's walked all the way up north. We got him up here, but he obviously went on the cruise. Yeah. Has many of the people swimming been complaining about him? Or one one group has. So yeah. Sam Lane. Oh yeah, I've seen him, yeah. Yeah, yeah his face straight through that. Yeah. Have any of your life about trying to speak to him at all? Yeah. No, 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 no the policemen are, are escorting him off, off the beach straight away. I think they're going to have a word to him up on the, on the prom and... Uh, Good old turtle loop time. <laughs> they've given him the old turtle loop. The man's details are checked for prior offences. Yeah. The police guy on the left, if he run the check, he'd be nervous if he's got a, a conviction or something. Yeah. Was this that you were coming down and you were laying next to him and stuff like that? And oh, okay. I just found it intimidating. So. Right. No worries, that's all right. Yeah. All right. Despite no previous record, the man is told to leave the beach. That's said we told him to go, so if he comes back, just let us know. We can come back. So. If you're any other dramas this last day, we'll be around the beach for the rest of the day. So. With Maxie and his best mates on the job, Bondi is safe as houses. I went to Europe. Brett and Alec are my best mate. Brett and Alec said it's all good. So yeah, but uh, it's good like Brad said, keeping Bondi clean, keeping people like that off the beach. After living at home for 17 years, Mum's boy Maxi is finally coming of age and moving out. Yeah, I've kind of dared myself into letting Maxi stay in my place. Uh, there's a few responsibilities, which I hope he's up to. It's in a place where there's no neighbours, no one can hear what goes on, so I could imagine there'll be some sort of debauchery or stupidity or something, yeah. Yeah, he's moving into Corey's place at the surf club. It's a disaster. It's not going to work. He's moving straight out of home, but he's got to take care of a whole clubhouse now. It's not going to work. He's a grub. It's no ordinary house. Maxie's moving into the caretaker's residence at nearby Bronte Surf Club while Corey is overseas. When I was 17, moving out would have been sounded like the best thing in the world, but once he's got no clean clothes, no food in the cupboard, and no one waking him up, 
he'll find that it's it's not as glorious as it sounds. It only seems like yesterday he was a baby, and now all of a sudden he's um, a baby. he's eight months from being an adult. And legally, that's you know you can do you can vote, and he can go to the clubs and pubs, which is a scary thought. But um, he's always been a responsible young man. Even Teddy's excited. It's near a beach. No, he likes it. He likes it. Now Maxie's big moment has finally arrived. It's time to farewell the family. So you mean? Yes. So you're too tall for me now. Oh. Come on, you're getting too big, mate. Go. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Next on Bondi Rescue. The boys in blue face off in hideous conditions. I can't even talk to you about it, it's so cold. Then a death in the water. Troy faces a lifeguard's toughest challenge. 